Dear students, today I would like to talk about the connective tissue cells and after I have two other lectures about the fibers and the ground substance of the connective tissue and finally in the third lecture I will talk about the different types of the connective tissue. So what is the connective tissue and supportive tissue? You know that this is one of the basic tissue types the connective and supportive tissue. The main characteristic is that we have a very dominant extracellular matrix between the cells where we have fibers and ground substance. We have a lot of different types of the connective and the supportive tissues. Here you can see different pictures from different types. For example, this one is from a loose connective tissue and we can talk about, of course, dense connective tissue and we have a lot of different types between these two endpoints. And uh, we have other uh, types where the background is the ground tissue is the dominant. For example, in the cartilage and uh, bones, these are much more stronger. That's why we call them supportive tissue. And it is also really uh, interesting that the blood, it is also one type of connective tissue. Here we have a lot of water between the cells. This is really important to mention at the beginning. I know that you have no lecture, no embryo lecture uh, until that time, but later you will learn the different development of the different main tissue types. And that's why it is important to mention that the connective tissue will originate from the mesoderm, but the uh, head and uh, the connective tissue of the head region and the progenitor cells of that will originate from the neurocrest. It is really important, but you will learn it later. Don't worry if you do not understand now. Here you can see a schematic picture from the structure of the connective tissue. This is really important to know the main compartments of the connective tissue. The connective tissue consists of cells. Here you can see we have different cells in the connective tissue. And between the cells we have the intercellular substance and if we see, we have different cells in the connective tissue and we can talk about two main groups. The fixed cells of the connective tissue, which will not move, they will be there. They won't change the position. And the other is the group of the mobile cells, which are able to migrate. They will go through the blood wall, the wall of the blood vessels, and they are able to move uh, within the connective tissue. And uh, if we see the intercellular substance, there we can see fibers, we can find fibers. We can talk about collagen fibers, elastic fibers and reticular fibers. I will show you in the next lecture. And also there we can see a jelly-like material, which is called the amorphous ground substance which is abundant in glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans. Here we can find water, for example, in the case of blood, or inorganic crystals, for example, in the bone or in teeth. Let's see now uh, the cells, because in this lecture I would like to show you the different cells of the connective tissue. Let's see uh, this picture. As I told you, we can talk about fixed cells and we can talk about mobile cells of the connective tissue. In uh, the group of the fixed cells, I would like to demonstrate for you the fibrocyte, fibroblast. They are really important parts of the connective tissue. The fibroblast will produce the fibers and the ground substance. This we have to mention the reticulum cells, the cells of the reticular connective tissue. I will talk about the mesenchymal stem cells. And in this group we have to mention the adipocytes, the chondroblast chondrocytes, osteoblast osteocytes, the cells of the cartilage and the cells of the bony tissue. 
And in the second group here, you can see the mobile cells where I will show you the macrophages, the histiocytes, and uh, I will show you the mast cells, and I will show you the different white blood cells too, which the lymphocytes, granulocytes, which are also uh, one type of mobile cells in the connective tissue. And finally, in a separated group, I would like to show you the melanocytes. So let's see now first the fibrocytes, fibroblasts. This is, this cell is really important in the connective tissue because uh, the fibroblasts, who are the active cells, they will produce the fibers and the ground substance of the connective tissue. Here in this schematic picture, you see the collagen fibers. These are the fibroblasts, which are fixed uh, on the surface of the collagen fibers. They are huge with big uh, cytoplasm and a lot of processes. So we, have, we can see them very well in the schematic picture. Now I would like to show you the details of the structure of the cell, I mean the fibroblasts and fibrocytes. Here we can see that the fibroblast and fibrocytes, these are different cells. The fibroblasts, these are the active cells. The fibrocytes, they are the inactive forms. And of course, that's why we have difference, uh, different differences between them. If we see the cytoplasm of the fibroblasts, it's abundant, it's irregular, we have B processes. And in the uh, case of fibrocyte, we have elongated fibers, flattened processes, uh, and of course they are not so big, they are not so large compared to the fibroblasts. If we see the nuclei of the fibroblast, uh, they have ovoid large uh, nuclei, which uh, they are really pale because of the uh, chromatic nucleus. And the other, the fibrocytes, they have small, ovoid, darker uh, nuclei compared to the other cell type. If you see the cytoplasm of the cells, uh, because the fibroblasts, they are active cells, that's why they have a lot of mitochondria within the cytoplasm and uh, well-developed Golgi apparatus and a lot of ribosomes. And of course, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is really important for the synthesis of the different molecules. And because of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes, these are basophilic. If you see the cytoplasm of the fibrocytes, they are smaller, uh, not so much rough endoplasmic reticulum inside, and freeze ribosomes, some mitochondria. So here we can see very well the difference between the cells. Uh, I would like to show you first a histological picture about the fibrocytes. The fibrocytes, these uh, cells, uh, inactive cells, they are located between the fibers. In this picture, you can see the dense collagenous connective tissue. It could be from a tendon or a tail of the rat. So these are the collagen fibers. And between the collagen fibers, we can see these elongated cells with sharp end. These are the fibrocytes or tendinocytes, if we are talking about the tendon. If you see a schematic picture uh, about the cross-section of the fibrocyte, they have star-shaped uh, cross-section. Here you can see the position of these cells between the collagen fibers. Similar structures are visible in the deeper part of the skin, which is a dense, uh, regular collagenous connective tissue, what we can find in the deepest part of the palm. Uh, between them, between this septum, we have a lot of fat uh, uh, pads. And uh, this is the electromicroscopic picture of the cross-section of the fibrocyte and the collagen fibers around. In the histological seminars, 
we will show you uh, the fibrocytes and fibroblasts in a special monolayer tissue culture. Within this monolayer tissue culture, we can see the differ different developmental stages uh, between the fibrocytes and fibroblasts. We use a special staining, which is called the gentian violet staining. This is a metachromastic staining, which means that everything will be uh, blue, but depending on the chemical structure, for example, the nucleus is darker, the cytoplasm is paler blue. So here, if you see this uh, monolayer tissue culture, and if I magnify one uh, part of this culture, you see this elongated cell there, this is one fibrocyte, and this bigger one with big processes, big cytoplasm, and huge pale nucleus, this is the fibroblast. So the fibrocyte and the fibroblast, they are also visible within this mono, monolayer cell culture. Where do we uh, see fibroblast within, a, uh, within the adult tissues? If we have uh, an injury on the surface of the skin after, the fibrocytes will be activated and the fibroblast will start to produce fibers and the healing of the skin is uh, started. So after the injury, uh, eight, uh, eight weeks after this injury, we can see a scar tissue in the skin. Uh, we have a lot of fibers, but these are not organized. Uh, in shape, and we have a lot of fibroblast within the collagen fibers. The fibroblast with big basophytic cytoplasm because of the lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum, because of the ribosomes, because of the active protein synthesis. And if we see, if we compare this structure which, with the healthy tissue, uh, there, the fibers, they are um, uh, in special order. We have only just fi small fibrocytes between uh, the collagen fibers. And here we can see also glands, hair follicles, but in a scar tissue we have no glands and we have no hair follicles. And if we compare these two different parts of the slide, you see that within a normal tissue, we have more elastic fibers and we have no elastic fibers in the scar tissue. We used here the Ortsein staining. The Ortsein staining is a special staining of the elastic fibers, what I will tell you in the next uh, lecture. Uh, I would like to tell you some words about the act activation of these fibroblasts. How uh, can we uh, activate the fibrocytes? So here you can see the injury on the surface where we have red blood cells, of course, thrombocytes. We have a lot of neutrophil granulocytes, uh, lymphocytes, macrophages. And these cells, they will produce different interleukins and different growth factors, which will activate the inactive fibrocytes, which are located here in the connective tissue. They will be fibroblasts. And the fibroblasts will produce a lot of fibers and the extracellular matrix. And we can talk about special myofibroblasts too, which will contain myosin and actin, and they can help uh, during the healing procedure to keep together the two sides of the wound of the injured uh, skin. And it is also really important to mention that we can find peripheral blood uh, fibrocytes, which will circ circulate with the blood only just half percent of the white blood cells. They are able to go through uh, uh, the vessels and go to that connective tissue where we need. And uh, during the embryogenesis, they have really important, in, uh, really important function in the development of the connective tissue of the different organs. Um, I think you know that if we have problem with the inactivation of these fibroblasts after an injury, you have an abnormal shaped um, 
uh, scar tissue in the skin, which is called the calloid. The calloid, uh, of course, we could have a genetical background for that, but we do not know exactly what is the path pathomechanism. We know that, for example, those people who have darker skin, they could have much more frequently this abnormal uh, healing procedure. Here you can see in this uh, picture. And, uh, for example, during the um, uh, special uh, body art, uh, they can use also the formation of the scar tissue, for example, this type of distortion. And also, uh, I have to mention, we have some uh, nation, for example, in Papua New Guinea. Here you can see where the... Uh, where the uh, uh, men, they, they uh, do a lot of uh, special scars on the surface of the skin and after they will look like a crocodile and the crocodiles, they are the strongest uh, animals based on their uh, idea. So that's why they use this very special procedure to show uh, their strength. Um, in front of the other uh, people. Uh, this is another slide, only just for demonstration. You can find it in your uh, internet notes uh, that we can find this very uh, huge amount of activated fibroblasts in case of ulcer. This picture is from a leg Ulcer. So if you have problem with the circulation of the extremities because of diabetes or injury, the skin uh, gets thinner, we have no hair follicle and uh, glands, the skin will be thinner, we have no good circulation and that's why we have not good uh, healing in case of an injury. And after this, if we see this uh, uh, skin, we have a lot of activated fibroblasts under the epithelium to produce a lot of collagen fibers and ground substance. We can find the same activated fibroblast in case of stomach ulcer. We know that behind this we have to mention the helicobacter pylori bacterial inflammation and of course the stress too. So there we have also a fibroblast. We can see these pictures, these slides uh, in the uh, net in our web page. The next point uh, within the fixed cells, these are the reticulum cells. The reticulum cells, uh, we can find the reticulum cells within the reticular connective tissue. They have the same function like the fibroblasts, they produce the fibers and the ground substance. The special reticular connective tissue, uh, it's a special meshwork, uh, consists of uh, reticular fibers and between uh, the reticular fibers at the cross points, we can see the special reticulum cells with, with processes which will cover uh, the fibers. Here we can see the structure. This is a very special meshwork of some parenchymal organs, for example, the lymphatic organs, the spleen, the tonsil, or the lymph node, or we can find the same within the red bone marrow, where we have to keep together a lot of cells, for example, the lymphocytes or the developing uh, blood cells. The special staining of the reticular fibers will be the PES. I will tell you later in the next lecture, but that's why we use this part. With PES, we can see the reticulum fibers, which will form this beautiful uh, background meshwork of the uh, organ. The third uh, cell here, the mesenchymal cell, uh, we know that we have a lot of uh, truly potent embryonic stem cells during the development. Uh, from these truly potent cells can develop a lot of different cell types. And from this, uh, we have different multipotent cells. The multipotent cells means that they have a um, special characteristic. So from the multipotent stem cells, we can talk about mesenchymal stem cells. From these multipotent stem uh, cells, uh, 
from this group can develop uh, the embryonic connective tissue. From the mesenchymal stem cell will be will differentiate the myocytes, the osteocytes, the chondrocytes, the adipocytes, the tendocytes. So the tissue, uh, the cells of the connective tissue, and as you see the muscle tissue too. But we have to talk about another multipotent stem cells, another stem cell, the hemopoietic stem cells. From the hemopoietic stem cells will develop the different uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, and also the platelets. You have a separated lecture about the hematopoiesis. There you will see details about this procedure. What is, uh, I would like to tell you some words about the mesenchymal stem cells. Now don't worry about this uh, picture, you will learn that the different germ layers and the different uh, development of the main organs. You will understand this uh, after your embryology lectures. Here we can see the main germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm. And I told you that the connective tissue, the main part of the connective tissue will be from the mesoderm. One part could be from the neurocrest. That is what you can see in this picture. Uh, but you will learn it later. So now I would like to show you one example or the um, embryonic uh, connective tissue. What we can show you very well within the slide of the placenta. Uh, in the placenta slide you can see the cross-sections of the chorionic villi and within the chorionic villi we can see this extra uh, special uh, embryonic connective tissue with the mesoblast cells which, will, which are uh, spindle-shaped cells. We have connection between them, they produce a lot of fibers and uh, ground substance and they are able to proliferate and differentiate and they have um, very important function during the embryogenesis, but we have we can find them also in adulthood too. They are important in the regeneration, and unfortunately, different tumors can develop from these undifferentiated uh, stem cells too. Uh, I think you heard about the possibility that we are able to collect stem cells at the time of the birth of the baby. From the umbilical cord, we can collect the blood and also we can collect special stem cells from the uh, connective tissue, from the Wharton's jelly, what you mean, I will tell you later in the other lecture. We know that this is uh, the gate of the uh, future uh, because uh, from the special embryonic uh, stem cells, um, they are able to, to build different organs. For example, here you can see the vagina of an ear. We know that these stem cells, uh, we can use them in the future in the treatment of different disorders. But of course, we do not know exactly what will be in the future but it is fact that we can collect stem cells at the time of the birth, but it is also true that we have these circulating stem cells in the, in the adulthood too, so we can find these stem cells in the blood in the later ages too. Uh, here within this group, I have to mention the adipocytes, the chondrocytes, chondroblast, osteoblast, osteocytes, only just few words because we have a separated lecture about the types of the connective tissue where I will tell you more details about the white fat and the brown fat and also you have a separated lecture about the cartilages and the bones where you can see details about the other cell types. So here only just two pictures about the two types of adipose tissue, the white fat and the brown fat. The white fat is that where we have huge cells with unilocular fat storage. This is really important uh, to energy storage and mechanical, it's important in the mechanical protection. And the brown fat, here within the brown fat we have multilocular fat storages and there they are, this is important in the thermal regulation because this uh, mitochondria they will produce a heat 
compared to uh, the white fat, but I will tell you details about this tissue later on. Let's see now the next group, the group of the mobile cells. I told you that we have, a, we have another stem cells, which are the hemopoietic stem cells. And from this hemopoietic stem cells will develop the lymphocytes, one type of the white uh, blood cells, and the granulocytes also. From this will develop also the special monocytes, macrophages, and the platelets red blood cells too. I have to mention those because those cells, these, those are the mobile cells of the connective tissue. So first, let's see the macrophages. The macrophages, they have a very special phagocytotic activity. 15 to 20 micrometer is the diameter of these cells. They are able to phagocyte different foreign particles. They have a lot of processes irregular cytoplasm and if you see the electron microscopic picture we have a lot of lysosomes within the cytoplasm to destroy the different uh, uh, particles. Here you see the macrophage within the connective tissue. This is called a histiocyte. This is the histiocyte. What's the function of the macrophages? As I told you, they have an important phagocytotic function. They uh, destroy foreign particles and they are also involved in the antigen presentation and the immune response reaction. And they are able to uh, phagocytose the different apoptotic cells and um, they produce a lot of enzymes, collagenase, elastase, which can help in the migration, in the moving movement of these cells. And it is also really important to know that they secrete a lot of interleukins, stimulating factors, growth factors, etc. Of course, it's not necessary to know all of this, but we have to know that they are involved uh, in this uh, uh, very, very complex uh, procedure. We can find macrophages in the peripheral organs and uh, these macrophages uh, within the periphery, they will form a group which is called the mononuclear phagocytotic system. All of these cells, they develop from the monocytes and after they go to the periphery and there they have phagocytotic function. The macrophage of the nervous system is called microglial cell. We will see it in the third semester. Uh, the special macrophage of the lung is called the alveolar macrophage. I will tell you some words about these cells. Histiocyte, I told you, the macrophage of the connective tissue. The Kupfer cell, this is the macrophage of the liver, for example. And in the bone, we can talk about the osteoclasts. They are also phagocytotic cells, which is interesting that they have more nuclei. You will see these osteoclasts, chondroclasts in the cartilage and the bone slides, bone formation slides mostly. So I would like to tell you some words about the alveolar macrophages. We can uh, call them heart defect cells. Why? We know that these are these alveolar macrophages. They are located within the uh, interalveolar septa and they are able to phagocyte different parts, different dirt, what we have within the alveoli. And uh, they will phagocyte also those red blood cells too, which uh, pass through the wall of the blood vessels because of the huge uh, pulmonary uh, pressure. And in this case, and these macrophages will phagocyte these red blood cells and they start to ferment the hemoglobin. And we have a dark uh, pigment which is called hemosiderin within uh, the uh, cytoplasm and they, are, they have a dark color. And we can see these dark cells within the sputum of uh, the patient. And that's why when the doctors, they saw these uh, dark cells within uh, the sputum of the patient, they knew that here we have problem with the pulmonary circulation. So that's why we call them heart 
defect cells. Oh, I'm sorry. After the next group is a group of the mast cells. The mast cells, they have special basophilic uh, granules within the cytoplasm, but it's not similar basophilic granulocytes what we have in the blood. They contain heparin histamine granules where we have prostaglandins, different uh, chemotactic factors and uh, different substances which are important in the allergic reactions. Uh, they contain heparin and histamine and that's why they will be PASS positive uh, if we stain with PASS the respiratory um, organs, for example, we have this slide from the uh, trachea where we have a pseudostratified columnar epithelium with kinocelia and under, the con under in the connective tissue we have pass positive cells which are the mast cells and uh, because of these uh, very special uh, particles they uh, with hematoxylinals in staining, they will be basophilic. And also within the connective tissue, we can see eosinophilic cells to the eosinophilic granulocytes, which are also involved in the allergical uh, reaction. So what's happening with the uh, mast cells? So first, when we uh, meet first with the allergen, the cells, uh, the B cells, the plasma cells will produce immunoglobulins and these immunoglobulins they will attach to the surface of the mast cells and in case of the second uh, meeting um, uh, in this case uh, these uh, granules will be degranulated right and this will be the acute allergic reaction where we have red pain and of course uh, here um, uh, capillary dilatation, that is what we can see in the skin. So that's why we have no allergic reaction when we meet first with one, for example, cream or perfume. And, but after, if we use that more, after we have an allergic reaction for that. I think you know very good the asthma or the special uh, skin disorders which based on this allergic reaction which is the most severe this is the anaphylactic shock because of for example a food or a bee or egg or different um, uh, sea foods and if we have a, this allergic reaction acute allergic reaction edema could be developed within the larynx so that's why it is really important to um, improve the free airway for a patient and you will learn it in the second semester how we have to cut uh, uh, the uh, larynx between the two laryngeal cartilages which is called the conicotomy. This, in, this is an acute procedure how you can save the patient, uh, save the life of the patient in the street for example if it is necessary. Okay, and the last two groups, uh, the groups of the lymphocytes and the granulocytes, only just a few words about these white blood cells. We can talk about B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes, they will produce the immunoglobulins. They are the uh, parts of the humoral immune system. The T lymphocytes, they are the part of the cell-mediated immune system. They can kill different uh, foreign uh, uh, agents. Here you can see with hematoxinals and staining the lymphocytes, they are round cells with round nuclei, 5 to 10 micrometer. The plasma cells, it's a little bigger. And these lymphocytes, they will form a round shape uh, structure, which is called the lymphatic follicle within the connective tissue. Um, and that's what we can see in the deeper part of the wall of the intestine. But you have lots of details about these cells in a lecture about the blood cells. And also we will demonstrate for you all of the characteristics of the granulocytes. Granulocyte, it means that we have different glanules within the cytoplasm. We can talk about neutrophil granulocyte. 
which is really important in the pro uh, protection against the bacterial inflammation. And I mentioned earlier the eosinophilic granulocytes, which are involved in the allergic reactions. So you see more details about these cells in the lecture about the blood. And finally, I have only just one separated uh, point, uh, which are the melanocytes. That's why it is uh, separated, because they have a different origin and they are not exact members of the other groups what I uh, told you, what I mentioned earlier. So the melanocytes, they originate from the neurocrest. And during the embryonic life, they, are, they will migrate through the connective tissue. And finally, they will go to the deeper part of the epidermis. It's located in the, in the stratum basale. The function of these melanocytes, they will produce the pigment, the melanin. And uh, here you can see they have processes which will produce towards the uppermost layer of the epithelium to the keratinocytes. And the keratinocytes, they will phagocyte one little part of uh, the process with the, with the pigment. And uh, this is how the pigment itself will go to the upper layer of the, of the epidermis. This procedure is called the cytokine secretion. We can talk about brown pigment, which is called eumelanin, and we can talk about red pigment too, it's called uh, pheomelanin. Uh, you know, uh, I hope you know that we have a lot of procedure, of course, during the uh, melanin procedure. We can activate it because of the UV light, and we have a lot of stimulating hormones. And uh, we have a uh, lot of melanocytes. For example, you saw it in the hairy skin slide. Uh, here, melanocytes we have in the hair bulb to, to form the color of our hair. And we can find them in the uh, skin too. They form different neighbors, you know, and uh, also uh, the melanome. The melanome is unfortunately the malignant form of uh, this. Uh, the group of the melanocytes within the skin. We can find melanocytes in other organs too. For example, in the choroid layer of the eye bowl, uh, we can find a lot of uh, melanocytes. Uh, here you can see one layer of pigmented uh, epithelial cells. You heard this in the first lecture about the epithelial tissue. They do not uh, produce melanin, they just uh, store it. This is the outermost layer of the retina. Also, we can find a lot of uh, melanocytes within the iris and the ciliary body. That's why we have different colors. And it is interesting that we have within the stria vascularis in the ear, if we have problem uh, with these pigmented cells, maybe it could be deafness. And also on the meninges, we have a lot of melanocytes. Uh, I would like to show you only just some uh, pictures uh, when melanin exactly, when pigment, we have different cells. For example, there within, from the, uh, from the uh, mammary gland, from the uh, uh, nipple, you can see this uh, picture. Here we can see pigments within the macrophages of the connective tissue. In case of tattoo, you can see pigments within the connective tissue, or we have some nuclei within the brain. For example, the substantia nigra. That's why it's nigra, because we have pigment within these cells. Maybe you heard that this is important in case of Parkinson's disease. These cells, they are degenerated. And also we have a melanocyte, uh, the cells, which are, which are the relatives of the melanocytes within animals, these are called the melanophores from the, from the fish. And finally, I would, I would like to tell you some words about the disorder of the synthesis of the pigment. Uh, if we have problem 
with the, the, uh, with the melanin production. In this case, those people, they have paler skin, you know, white hair, and um, this is called the albinism. The albinism is 1 to 20,000 in, in the European countries. It's much more frequent in uh, Africa, for example. And there, uh, those here, I would like to show you some very sad pictures, because uh, uh, here in Tanzania, for example, uh, the, the body parts of those people are used in, in uh, for example, used by different witch doctors because they think that the body parts of the albinos, they have a very big, how you say, important uh, protective um, function and it means lucky, for example, in case of the building of one uh, market, uh, for example. And unfortunately, that's why you have, we have these injuries with these babies, so they have to protect these babies against this uh, very aggressive uh, behavior. But fortunately here in, in Europe they are in safe. We have lot, a lot of beautiful albinos between us. I hope with this uh, picture I wish you a very good study. I hope you learn a lot about the cells and uh, we will meet next two lectures about the connective tissue. See you later.